Welcome to this video, the 12th in the series on mapping, reducing and filtering. My name's Andy Wicks and in this video we're going to look at some higher level functions in Scheme that make your life as a programmer much easier. So what are mapping, filtering and reducing? We're going to start with an overview. Mapping is where the same function is applied to each item in a list. For example, capitalising letters or squaring each number in a list. Filtering is where a new list is created by filtering out some items. For example, we might have a list of grades and we want to filter out those that are greater than 40. And finally, we've got reducing. And this happens when each item in a list is used to create a single answer. So, for example, we want a total of a set of numbers. But I'll show you that with a real problem. Here I'd like you to imagine that I have a list of marks for a module and I'd like to do three separate tasks. I'd like to increase all the marks by five. It's been deemed that I've marked too harshly and everybody should get five more. Secondly, I'd like to filter out those who scored zero. Those who score zero are the ones who didn't submit their work. So looking at those grades will give me a distorted view. I'd like to filter out the zeros. And finally, I'd like to find the total of the marks. So let's move on. Here I have that list of grades that I spoke about earlier. And the first thing I'd like to do is to add five to each of those grades. Now my normal style is to have the code ready, but in this case I want to build it up. What we need is a map function. So I type in map a map takes two arguments. It takes a lambda function. The lambda functions, you'll remember, are those that are anonymous functions that do a something. So if I open and close that bracket, and I close the end one as well, just to make sure that I have all my brackets correct, now I can go back and add in the lambda. Now, lambda function takes two pieces. It takes a value. So in this case, I'm going to say that each grade is called X. I could have called it G or anything that I want. And then I have to say what happens to that value of X. So again, I open and close a bracket and I say what I want to happen. What I'd like to do is to add 5 to each value of X. And now I have my lambda function. So the final step is to add the name of the list that I want to map. And in this case, it's GRDS. So now I have my list of grades and I have the mapping function that allows me to add five to that. So let's run this and see what we get. And fortunately, we get five added on to each grade. The general format of the map function is map, a lambda function, and the name of the list that we'd like to work on with this mapping. The next problem I'd like to have a look at is where we filter out those who scored zero. That also takes a lambda function. That also needs a list on which it's going to work. So I'm going to replace map with filter and that requires a lambda function. And that lambda function in this case is something a little different to this. I don't want to add five anymore. But I do want to see whether, whether x is equal to 0. So is x equal to 0? Filter them out. So if I run this, I get, oh, I only get the zeros. Maybe I haven't got my function quite right. Well, what I want are those that are not equal to 0. So I have to add in another function here to say not. And now if I run this, now I exclude the ones who didn't hand in any coursework. The format of the filter function is the same as the format of the map function. It takes a lambda expression. That lambda expression has to return a true or false for any particular item. And it applies it to a list, grades. 
Finally, what I'd like to do is to get the total of all the grades. And for that, I need a fold function in Scheme. Now, that is relatively simple. It's fold R or fold L, and I'll show you the difference in a moment. And then you say what it is you want to do. So in this case, we want to add. You need to start with an initial value. If I add 0 onto something, I'm not changing the total. So I can say 0 here without affecting the overall total. And then I say, what is it that I want to do the adding to? Well, I want it to do that to each item in grades. So if I run this, I get 456. Fold does a particular function, in this case plus, with an initial value of in this case, zero, to each item in the list called grades. I promise to show you what other things fold could do. We might also have something like, now I promise to show you other things that the folds could do. Here, what I've got is fold r, cons, construct a list with an initial value of zero, and do that with each item in grades. If I do that, I've got fold R, which folds from right to left, and I've got fold L, which folds from left to right. Let me run this bit of code, and it'll all become a bit clearer. Here, what we've got is the initial value at the end. That's been added to the end of the list. You'll remember that dot means this has been added to the list. So we've constructed a list based on the value grades, and if we do fold R, it takes each item in the list grades and just puts the initial value at the end. If we use fold L, it reverses the list. It starts from the right, but it still puts that initial value at the far end. But the list is now in reverse order. And that can be useful when you're trying to use lists with texting, for example. In the next video, what I'd like to do is to create a little application.